This is Jeff Billard, and you're listening to the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Strong themes and coarse language may apply. This podcast is a serial narrative, a story told episode by episode. Consequently, your listening journey would best be begun at the beginning. That's The Plague Clowns, Episode 1. It is the year 2015, and life has lost all meaning. What once was up is down. What once was right is wrong. And those who dare to make a podcast which subversively reanimates the dead art of radio theater are considered dangerous criminal outcasts. Driven into exile, four pungent brigands risk their lives to broadcast from a South Seas barge crudely fashioned from the disintegrating corpse of an ancient titan and several thousand yards of cooking twine to bring you the triumph, the majesty, the sublimity of rude alchemy. Previously on The Plague Clowns. Who's there? Hey, me yourself. <laughs> This man is dead. They most like will blame us for this man laying down his life sack. Quick, we are Barry. What's this? Looks like it to be some sort of a bag of balls. Okay, you ready for the performance? The master is watching. You suck, you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. Uh, the routine we practiced last night. You juggle while I play. Good show. You really turned it around. No, no, I'm gonna go up there. <laughs> That is the end of this afternoon's performance. Let's just gather our things from the stable and go our separate ways. You have brought death to Palgol! Ah. Encircle! Oh, uh, sorry folks, Courtney and I are running a little behind. If you could just give us a quick second, Courtney and I are finishing up a little game. It's a bit like makeup sex for us, but in a completely heterosexual way. Okay, Courtney, don't forget to discard. Rummy! <laughs> oh, yeah! I'll just take that card and add it to my score. Wow, I am really pulling away here. You know, it's really not as much fun when you are this far ahead. Did you really not see that four, five, six of diamonds? I mean, it's sitting right in front of you. <laughs> no, 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 Courtney, don't. Don't give me that ridiculous pouty face look. I didn't write the rules. They don't just exist to benefit dear old narrator. You know perfectly well that if a playable card is discarded, your opponent can call Rummy and add the discard to his or her score. You've got to be kidding me. That, that, that's great, Court. That's just great. The cards are soaked. Do you know what I went through to get a deck of cards down here? Four cartons of cigarettes, two cases of Kotex, and multiple humiliating services rendered. Oh, 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 right. Yeah, absolutely right. I subconsciously wanted to perform those services. I subconsciously wanted to give good old Randy an anima after taco night. That's just brilliant, Dr. Courtney. You know what? Maybe if you took two seconds out of your day to think about someone other than yourself, you'd realize that I sacrificed a lot for you and I to have these cards so we could spend some quality time together. I guess you haven't noticed, but our relationship has been a little troubled lately, which leads me to believe that you simply don't care. You know, your parents must have been colossal a-holes to raise such a loser like yourself. Did you just throw a mannequin limb at me? Did you just throw a second mannequin limb at me? Well, two can play at that game. Suck on these unopened but expired formaldehyde jars. Didn't like that, did you? Come at me, Court. Come at me! Don't, don't. No, my foot. It's my second one. It's my second one. Dirty play. Dirty. Wait, wait. <laughs> no, let me catch my breath. Let me catch my breath. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. 
stop, 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 stop. Uh, uh, time out. Jesus, Courtney. Uh, oh, God. Uh, I think you broke my nose. Oh, uh, we. Oh, uh, oh, God. Uh, is there blood? Is there blood? Seriously, is there blood? Oh, oof. Oh, I'm feeling woozy. Oh, oh shake it off, narrator. You know what, Courtney? I'm getting sick and tired of our fight slash apology routine, and it's simply never gotten physical until today. Let's let's just forget this one ever happened. From here on out, I think we should just keep to ourselves and focus on the broadcast. If a friendship trickles in on its own, hey, great. If not, that's okay too. I'm tired, Courtney. I'm just tired. Now, now can you please just adjust my mic levels and we'll get started. The Plague Clowns is brought to you by Rodrigo's Sleep Sedation Hair Cuttery. I put you to sleep, then cut your hair. After that, other stuff. When last we left our beloved troop, they were surrounded by a disgruntled and fearful mob of pale Golians. I have to give them credit, as they are shockingly innovative people. The weapons they've created out of normal household objects and farm implements were, for lack of a better word, breathtaking. Pitchforks, sacks full of rocks, children, heaps of dung, an assortment of random scrap metal. Okay, I am... I may have jumped the gun on that last compliment. These weapons are quite unimpressive. But as a a people, they do have a lot of passion. I've got to give them that. Each member of our troop was brought to their knees and held firmly against their will. A new, seemingly ordinary villager emerged and took command of the mob and their torturous activities. Who's ready for some mob justice? I can't hear you! I said, who's ready for a whole lot of mob justice tonight? That's what I like to hear. Do you feel that, fellow Palgolians? Do you feel the electricity in the air? Oh, yeah, I love it! These Cretans, soiling themselves before us, have brought death and disease to our fair but mostly foul land. Granted, we usually have a steady supply of both death and disease at any given time, but upon their arrival there was a noticeable spike in death, and I am pretty sure the disease will follow. Anyways, these men are un. Undoubtedly cursed! And we all know there was only one cleansing element for the accursed! Fire! Yeah! With this burning declaration, each member of our troop was doused with a homemade incendiary solution. Torches were ignited throughout the mob, and the situation grew infinitely more dangerous for our troop. (laughs) Succumbing to fear, Miles began to weep. What do we have here? This foreign lady boy dares to interrupt our fun with its pathetic tears. Tell me, princess, why do you weep so? Please, sir, have mercy on us. We are but an innocent troop of traveling performers invited here by your own master. We only wanted to bring you joy through our talents. Surely you can find it in your heart to let us go. You make good points, dear sweet boy girl. Perhaps there is something you can do to win your freedom. Sing us a song, fair man maiden, and if it pleases us, you and your friends may walk away unharmed. Oh, most kind, sir, and I shall not disappoint. I shall sing you 
a ballad my own mother sang to me when I was but a babe upon her lap. It is called The Lark and the Lily. Miles's lullaby began with a high, soft and sweet tone, which he executed flawlessly. The But before Miles could angelically sing the rest of the lullaby, the mob leader scooped up some nearby dung into his hand and forced it into Miles's mouth, making sure to slather what was left all over the poor boy's face. The troops struggled to break free of their captors at the sight of their dear sweet Miles being accosted, but the villagers were too many. Leave that poor boy alone. Shut your mouth, old man! I will go to your mistress whenever I please! Bring foreigners forward and let us begin the cleansing of Pao Gold! At the mob leader's command, our troop was forcibly lined up shoulder to shoulder with just enough space between each of them to prevent one from igniting the other. The mob leader, you see, desired to set each individual ablaze himself. There was a devilish excitement throughout the crowd, and each villager salivated at the promise of a horrific spectacle. The members of our troop were surprisingly stoic, except for Miles, who passed out. First in line was Niku. Oh, yes! What is your name? Niku. Well, Niku, prepare to be cleansed. With an eerie calmness, the mob leader raised his torch above his head and faced the crowd. His neutral expression melted into a sadistic grin as he made one final statement. These men have brought death to our people. Now it is our turn to bring death to them. The leader spun around with great speed and flourish and plunged the torch down on... <laughs> ah, okay. Holy shit! Kone just kicked the piss out of the mob leader! I think he's dead. Yeah, yeah, he's totally dead. Wow, I really didn't see that coming. My goodness, way to go, Hane. With this shocking intervention, the members of our troop broke free of their captors and brought the fight to the mob, except for Miles, who was still passed out. Woolston attempted to challenge several villagers to a formal duel, but they all ignored him. Celio and Alakino seemed to be using some sort of chicken technique. I don't mean they were cowardly avoiding the fight, but rather Alakino had jumped up on the shoulders of Celio as if they were at a pool party with a bunch of teenagers. Oh, I remember those pool parties. They were the good days. <laughs> those were the days, you know. And every now and then, the hot chick at the party would jump up on your shoulders for a game of chicken, and you knew right at the back of your neck was... Eh, never mind, I'm getting off topic. It seemed Niku yeah, and Dan York were solely elbow. using their elbows to yeah. attack. Yeah. Strange yet effective. Hey, yo, see. Uh, you never Think see a bow coming, do you? Take a uh. cheat. Uh. Hey. In the name of the Master of Rebels, cease this squabble immediately. Oh, fish tarts. We had him on the run, eh, Niku? Yes, Niku elbow many nipples. Hmm. Apparently the gypsies were aiming their elbows at people's nipples. Fascinating. Hear ye, hear ye. Listen to the latest pronouncement from the great master of rebels. The master wishes to congratulate this ragtag group of performers on a fine show this afternoon. You have met his approval and he has deigned to invite you all to join him in... In... Oh, damn it. Uh... Oh, I knew I should have written this down. Uh... Such a short pronouncement, I was trying to save some vellum. Hold on. Uh... You have met with his approval and he has deigned to invite you all to join him in... Ah, nothing. God damn it. This is really embarrassing. Do you guys want to keep fighting or uh, whatever for a second while I try to think or... Forgive me, sir, but... Could you possibly be referring to Castrum Crucis? Crucis, yes. Yes. Oh, man. Uh, it was right there on the tip of my tongue. Yes, thank you. Castrum Crucis. That's it. That's where I live. Up there in the Castrum. The master liked your show. He wants you to come stay at the Castrum. Wow, it's really a lot easier to just talk to people instead of pronouncing all the time. 
Hey, this is a good. We did it. We won the competition. We're gonna be a richer than a pantalone. Yay! Yay. I just woke up. What are we saying yay about? Ah, uh, there, there, lad. All's well now. We're on our way to the castle. The master liked our performance. Oh, hurrah! And so, while the Herald soldiers flayed the offending villagers alive for accosting the master's much favored performers, our happy troops skipped merrily up the steep mountain to the gates of the citadel known as Castrum Crucis. The walls of the citadel were sooty yet shiny, pitch black yet glowing, grim yet vibrant. The whole monstrosity seemed as if it would last through eternity, but could just as easily be flung to pieces by an errant gust of wind. The gates clacked open, and the jubilant, though increasingly edgy party, entered the fortress. A light meal will be provided shortly. In the meantime, make yourselves at home! Ooh, look, Walston. A botanical conservatory. Is that a Spanish hydrangea? Let's have a look. Hey, over there on a quino. A wine cellar. It looks like they have some uh, nice vintages. Let's see if we can get a drink. I damn the order. Holy shit! Look at these toilets! I know. Me first. No, wait, 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 is that. No! Yes, yes, Nick. There is more than one poop hole carved in the S plank. Niku? Niku, are you alright? He's okay. I just. This special moment for Nico. Hane, come see this. Let's, uh, let's let them enjoy that, shall we? Meanwhile, the English. These Varanesian honeysuckle are absolutely delightful. And the Egyptian crawling nightshade. Hmm. To die for. Oh, my God. Is that a North Mongolian crossbred tulip pine? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Ah, uh, damn. This is good fucking partony. I'll prune what he's pruning. By St. George. Ben? Ben Fontenoy? In the flesh. And in my ass! And in my ass! Ben's holding two puppets. It's not more characters, don't worry. Great Scott, Ben. Ben, old boy, why, I haven't seen you in, what, ten years? No, couldn't have been that long. I saw you outside of Basilton at the start of my tour. Yes, well, that was at least ten. Uh, Ahem. Oh, forgive me. Uh, ben, uh, I'd like you to meet Miles. He's a young, inexperienced boy whom I am showing the ways of the world. Well, I'll bet you all. Don't be crude, Ponce. Shut up, Judy. Take that. Yeah, that's the way you do it. Oh, goody. I see your puppets are just as quarrelsome as ever. Oh, my. Delightful. Ha, ha, ha. What hilarious sport. The way the daddy puppet smacks the mommy puppet when she gives him lip. Oh, spot on. Oh, Gordon, why you come home drunk again when we ain't paid for Miles' grown-up trousers yet? Oh, shut your gob, Kate. Why don't you lend him your pantaloons, the little dandy bugger? Ha, ha, ha. Good show. Thanks very much, lad. I've been touring with Punch and Judy all about Europe. As luck would have it, I heard about a competition here in Pal Gull. Fame and wealth beyond comprehension, I think it said. Well, old Ben couldn't pass it up, so I trekked on over. The master liked my little show, so now I'm here. Oh. Hmm. What? Uh, well, I suppose we thought we won the competition. The same thing happened to us. Oh. Well, uh, no worries. I'm sure it'll work out. There's bound to be more than enough fortune to go around. While the befuddled Britons scratched their heads, the gypsies finished up in the outhouse. Don't come in don't here! Come don't come in here! Don't come in here! Don't come in here! It's like a puddle! Whoops! Oh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, they're not ready yet. Sorry, fellas. Uh, sorry, honey. Let's check on the Italians. This is some good wine. <laughs> hey, Anakino. Deliciosioso. I have a little or too much. I go to drain my cannoli. No problem. Oh. Oh. Hello. Oh. Is there someone in here? 
Oh, my stomach is also. Ave Maria! Is that. Can it be? Lucian, is that you? Celio, I have no believe it. <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry, my friend. I have been a drinking a little. I still cannot believe in my eyes. We all thought you were dead. It has been a most difficult performing with no Pedrolino, the clever servant. No, no, you are too kind. I am not dead. I just drink too much. I woke up after the, uh, the, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, and I follow only path I see through the woods. I end up here. They let you in? No, first I perform. I tell her my best joke. You know, uh, the one about the sausage? They're all about a sausage. No, they are not. Uh, they are... Well, there's a one... Uh, okay, never mind. Point is, the master let me into the castle. I don't understand. I, I, I thought we won the competition. We? Yes, uh, me and Alecchino. Alecchino? He is still with you? Yes, of course, yeah. Lucian. Hey, oh, where do you go? Lucian! I don't think he likes me. Santa Maria! Where did you come from? I come back from a peepee. Well, come on. Let's go find out what's wrong with him. Okay, uh, how about now, guys? He's okay. Oh, um... Okay, great. Take it away. Come on, Niku. We go find the rest of the troop. I don't believe this, Daniel. Daniel Wingratsky, Dotchuk, Litvinovich, Krukluk. Mirna? Is that you? Nina Kudelin Slavic Popovic Zemlinsky? Yes, except it's Mirna Kudelin Slavic Popovic Zemlinsky Ivanov Prybanik Jakovnik Wall now. I got them married. Hey! But that's great! Congratulations! Ah, him! Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Where are my manner, ladies? <laughs> Mirna, I'd like you to meet Niku and Hane. Mirna was dancer in last troupe for which I play. She is best dancer in the world. Then you're, you're too kind. Hey, you never say Niku, best stage magician in the world. Yeah, or Hane, best donkey in the world. What, you not think Hane is best donkey in the world? Answer very carefully, my friend. Uh, yeah, he better. Look, you all are the best. Mirna, why are you here? I've not seen you in, like, seven years, I think? No, not nearly that long. I arrive here shortly after our group breakup and I get married. New husband, Ivan, bring me here after he hear of competition. We please the master with the dance and he invite us to stay. What the shit? That's what happened to us. Okay, you get it now? There's a theme, okay? They all thought they were the only winners, but they weren't. Cool? We all got that? Next scene. Sorry, I'm trying to move this along a bit. I'll be damned if Randy's getting the last green jello this time. Ever since he got skull drilled, he's even faster. It's like they bored out every part of his brain except for the part that focuses laser-like on gathering every green jello in a Dixie cup in the entire calf. I mean, I don't even like jello, but just to see the look on his slack, moist face while I scarf that green goop right in front of him. Mm. Yeah. All right, seriously, let's move. Hear ye, hear ye! Let every man and woman know the Master of Revels has invited all worthy performers into the Great Hall for a feast like none other. The Master himself will join you, a most rare and gracious honour. All performers have until the half-chime to make their way to the celebration. Most importantly, our participants should not... Ouch! Goodness gracious, I have a bit of a leg cramp developing. Okay, okay, it's easing up. Most importantly, our participants should not... No, I was wrong. This isn't going away any time soon. Pain sounds. It's right in my left calf. It's getting worse. I must be dehydrated. I'm going to fetch myself a tankard of water. Okay, you can stop writing now. This announcement will be continued at a later time. This announce bring joy to stomach, eh, Niku? Agreement, Danior. Best time for a feast is after difficult and painful poop. It like reward for job well done. Kind of reminder that the blood and tears were worth it. 
Mirna, you sure way to Great Hall? Of course, Daniel. Let us hurry. I want to get good seat to see the master. Sound like Mirna have soft eye holes for a master man. Eh, Daniel? I'm not going to say anything, but yeah, totally sound like that. Cut the doo-doo. I am married woman. Daniel, you just still mad I not let you see my crumpwarf behind barn back in slump raft years ago. Oh, shits. I hear things about the master. Maybe he do more than revelries. What you hear, Mirna? Yes, yeah, speak what you hear. I hear maybe master could be Vlad Tepes. Vlad, Vlad Tepes? Tepes. Yes, the impaler from Wallachia. It okay, Kane. Mirna just trying to scare us. The Aitais, with bellies full of vino, heard Khani's fearful bray and made their way to the rescue. Khani, eh? Who is a hurting our hero? I'll a bop him one in the head. No, 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 Warakino, you don't bop them in the hand. You stab them in the back when they are distracted. And before he passes out, you tell him your plans to murder his entire family. You know, the Italian way. Silly, eh? What would I do without you? What can I say? Don't play your games with our donkey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calming down, you two. Hane just fine. That was not an I'm okay sounding hee haw. Our friend Mirna make joke about Master being Vlad the Impaler. I no joke. I hear what I hear. But Cilio, on my way to make a pee pee, the other performers spoke of the Master. Ha <laughs> ha, no, don't be a silly. The master is our friend. He liked our performance. Do you really think he is the Pied Piper of Hamelin like those of buffoons say? What's that you say? The Pied Piper of Hamelin? Ah, my boy, we've been over this. That was just a story your father would tell you to give you a little fright. I start to get feeling your papa was dick, Miles. Ditto. He'd tell me that story right before he'd lock me in the shaming room from Thursday nightfall to the Sabbath. Shaming a room? Yes. You know. The room that turns sissy boys into men. Ours was just behind the furnace and next to my dead sister's sleeping cot. Didn't your parents keep one? No. No. How bizarre. Father said all families had one. Shaming rooms and mandatory self-beatings. Those are the keys to becoming a fully functional man, he'd say. This makes me feel sad. Okay, okay, enough of this talk. Pied pipers, impalers, shaming rooms. Next, we'll be talking about Mephistopheles himself. Mephistopheles, you say? Goodness, that takes me back a long way. Oh, here we go. Must you mention a character from literary history? Nine times out of ten, Wollstone has either played the role or was dramaturg for the production and has a lot to say about it. It was my 26th year. No, no, my 27th year, I believe. My first big break onto the boards of the London stage, playing Faust. Boy, did I want to impress my director. Gilchrist was his name. Eldred Gilchrist. Yes, that's it. If you can believe it, I made the voyage to Deutschland just to research the legend. Mephistopheles, funny you mention his name. A passage from an ancient text always comes to mind when I hear it. Beware, you seekers of knowledge. You'll soon be forced to acknowledge that carved from the apple tree you'll find the devil's own cutlery. What does that mean? Well, my dear boy, it... it, it, Oh. Without warning, and though no one who was gathered there could say when it started, silence enveloped the hall like a wave slowly rolling in at high tide. When Wollstone stopped chattering and raised his eyes to regard the room, he saw that all the other attendees were peering at the doorway at the great hall, which had somehow slipped open soundlessly. There, in the centre, stood a pleasant-faced, twinkle-eyed older man. Present to you the warden of Castrum Crucis, the sovereign of Palgol, the. No, oh, no, that's enough of that. Thank you, Heralds. No need to bore our guests with title after title. Good evening. Allow me to summarize, my dear friend, the Herald's discourse. I am the Master of Revels, 
and your doting host. You are here because I found you to be in possession of that most rare and valuable quality, worthy of the greatest praise and admiration. Talent. This single attribute above all others is the most important, the most dear, and the most coveted, and for good reason. It is talent that shall yield the greatest reward our dirty, broken world has come to offer. Fame. And while you stay under this humble roof, fame will be your mistress. What remains to be seen is whether you have what it takes to bed her. I see here in my castle the finest bards of the Anglo-Saxon theatre. Thank you for your journey, Wollstone Miles and Ben. I see also the daring, exciting magicians and musicians from closer to home. Welcome, Niku, Daniel, Myrna, Ivan. <gasps> and who could forget the comedians of the Italian Commedia? You are most welcome, Celia Lucian, and... Hello. Hello, my friend in the mask. Apologies, but I... But I have forgotten your name. Don't, don't, don't tell me. I'm sure it will come to me in time. The master went on, greeting each performer by name, with the warmth of a grandfather bouncing his grandchild on his knee. He finished and walked to a different door at the other end of the hall. It is so good to see all of you here where you belong. It does wonders for my heart to know that I have assembled you, my gifted, talented children, all together in one place. I'm... I'm sorry. I... I promised myself I would not get so emotional. I have no children of my own, so you'll forgive me if I project just a tiny bit of that affection onto you. <clears throat> now, I truly wish I could award all of you the grand prize, but... Wait, what do you say? All of us? We don't understand. Forgive them, Master, for their outbursts, but it is true. We were led to believe that we had won the competition and would enjoy the fame and fortune promised by your pronouncement. Oh, oh my children, once again I, I beg humbly for your forgiveness. If the pronouncement was unclear in any way, then surely there is no one to blame but myself. No, the performances in the village square were merely auditions. The true competition will be held right here in Castrum Crucis tomorrow. Please, please, my children, please allow me to make it up to you. No matter who is victorious tomorrow, you shall all live a life of wealth and glory tonight. In honor of tomorrow's competition, I welcome you all to the ballroom of Castrum Crucis for a magnificent celebration. Any food, drink, or desire you can imagine will not be denied you. Enter, my children, and partake of the ball. With that, the master opened the door, and the luxurious opulence within seemed to instantly spill out into the hall like a beam of light. The performers rushed inside, and soon were surrounded by the smells of rich, roasting meat, and the sights of colorful and exotic foods, the jolly pouring of fine ales and wines, and the sweetest, most lively music they had ever heard. Austin, I don't believe this. I feel like we've made it. Yes, yes, do you have any room in your bag? I'm taking some of these cheese things home. Get it? Because <laughs> actors like free food. <laughs> Mirna, would you care to dance? Well, my husband... The... Forget him for two second minute. Here we go. Honey, may I have this dance? <laughs> well, Arakino, if nothing else, this is the best party I have ever seen. Arakino? Arakino? Where did you go, Arakino? <laughs> What's happening to that cheese servant? Oh dear God, not again! Hello, mate. What's the matter with you? All I did was ask him for a pint. My children, my children, please, remain calm. Guess on that, I'm getting out of here. I'm afraid it won't be possible. Guards? In moments, the door and gates to the castle were clicked shut and locked tight. Fear not, my children. We will get to the bottom of these unfortunate deaths. But, in the meantime, 
I must protect my village. This castle is under quarantine. Suddenly, a great knocking was heard at the door that had just locked behind them. Um, we did not hear knock. Did you hear knock, Niku? No. Hane, you hear knock? Hane, not hear knock. Hmm, that's odd. There, I, I just heard it again. That sure as hell sounds like a strong knock on the great hall doors of Castrum Crucis. We don't know what else to tell you. We don't hear any knocking. Perhaps this is a sound mixing issue. Good point, Miles, but, but Courtney is right here and claims the mixer is running just fine. Really, Courtney, no bugs at all? The mixer has been glitchy in the past. What the hell? Someone really wants to get in somewhere, but if if the knocking isn't in the story, then it must be... Oh, my God. They found us, Courtney. I don't know how, but quick, burn everything! There's, there's no way out of here. What are we going to do? Listen, 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 Courtney. You do remember that pact we made months ago, right? If you are the only survivor, you must find my personal computer and burn the hard drive. Second thought, if you can, dump the whole bastard in acid. It's amazing what these tech guys can do with charred hard drives these days. Oh, God. Oh, God. They've almost broken through. We have no choice. Arm yourself, God. Arm yourself! I don't want to die, but if I must, I'd rather do it fighting beside you. <gasps> it's you! The Plague Clowns is brought to you by U.S. War Bonds. Pitch in and do your part to help Uncle Sam. What? You didn't know there's a war on? That's probably because the government hasn't followed the proper constitutional procedure for declaring war since 1941, yet we have increasingly found ourselves in progressively longer and bloodier conflicts with growing apathy from the public. But sure, go ahead and enjoy this goddamn sound story about jesters or whatever the fuck. Rude Alchemy is Mr. Thomas Hodgkin, Mr. Andrew Kane, Mr. Andy Wertner, and Mr. Ryan Whalen. The Plague Clowns a Story by Rude Alchemy with Mr. Kane as lead story editor. This episode written by Mr. Whalen and Mr. Wertner and edited by Mr. Kane. Featuring the voices of Rude Alchemy with Ms. Angela Wertner as Myrna and Neil Rathwin as the master. Music composed by Mr. Benjamin J. Robb. For a listing of Creative Commons sound effects attributions, visit RudeAlchemy.com slash attributions. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. To support Rude Alchemy and gain access to exclusive bonus content including blooper reels from every episode visit rudealchemy.com slash support and finally come to me come to talk come to the old one come to the heart of the unformed talk talk me him candelock me him mean and tau talk you're listening to friday follies jokes laughs and guffaws to tickle your funny bone on the mutual audio network Join us tomorrow morning on Mutual for Saturday Story Circle. Bring the kids, your coloring books, and crayons, and get the whole family into a great start to the day with audio cartoons. You can always subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of audio drama that fits your fancy. Or discover Saturday Story Circle in your favorite podcast players like Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify. 